Hi there, my name is Forrest Valkai, and today I'm going to teach you about menstruation. And while I do that, I'm going to be using this TENS unit, which has electrodes firmly affixed to my stomach, in order to constantly electrocute my lower abdominal muscles to simulate period cramps. Now my friends on the internet tell me that somewhere between a level 4 and a level 6 on this device is a rough approximation of an average cramp, but uh, we're going to send this little dude all the way up to a level 10 over the course of this video, and I'm going to be reading really important facts about periods and how they work from this script that I wrote, because I don't want to mess this up and have to do it twice. So, without further ado, we're going to go and turn on our little machine here. You can see on both sides there isn't a bar yet because we haven't turned it up. And here is the top and the bottom set to level 1. And that feels like nothing. It's a little tickle, just letting me know that it's on. So, menstruation also known as a period, is when blood and tissue from your uterus comes out of your vagina. Not everyone who gets a period identifies as a girl or a woman. Transgender men, non-binary and genderqueer people, for example, can all have vaginas and uteruses and fallopian tubes and ovaries and therefore can still get periods. Let's go and go up to level two. Ooh, yeah, and there we go. Okay, significant difference between level one and level two. People with uteruses usually start menstruating around age 10 to 12. Your first period is called menarche, and when you stop getting periods, usually around age 55, that is called menopause. This means that on average, and not including pregnancies, a person with functional ovaries will have around 480 periods over the course of their lifetime. Wow. Let's go up to level three. Cool. Ah. Phew. Okay. There's two levels in each level. So I have to click it one and then again, and then I have to switch over to the other side and then one again. So it's like, it's awful and then it's more awful <laughs> each time. All right, fun. Um, a period occurs as a part of a cycle that usually lasts around 28 days. Everyone's menstrual cycle is timed differently and cycles as short as 21 days or even as long as 40 days are considered normal. Let's go up again, level four. Ooh. <laughs> Uh, in the first part of the menstrual cycle, estrogen levels increase, causing the ovaries to release an egg and the inner lining of the uterus to begin thickening. Level five. <laughs> it's getting hard to stand up straight because it's like it's making these muscles contract, which bends me over. Okay, uh, level uh, five. So we're on here. In the next phase, uh, another hormone called progesterone helps to prepare the uterus for the implantation of a developing embryo. If the egg isn't fertilized, however, the egg will simply break down and be reabsorbed by the body. This occurs during the final phase of the cycle where estrogen and progesterone levels fall, leading to the detachment of the inner uterine lining and new hormones called prostaglandins take their place, causing contractions, which you may recognize as cramping. These prostaglandins also shorten digestion time, which causes some people to experience the frightful diarrhea known as period poops. Up we go to level six now. <laughs> ah! <laughs> and the top side. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Uh, uh, periods usually last between two to seven days. That's a total of around seven to ten years of being on your period. Holy crap. Uh, and most women lose around three to five tablespoons of blood during their period, although heavier bleeding is not uncommon. But on the low end, that equates ow, uh, to around 7.5 gallons or 28 liters of blood over the course of your lifetime. Pretty sure my fiance goes through that in one month. All right, let's go to level seven with this one. <laughs> the other side. <laughs> it burns. <laughs> okay, uh, poor menstrual hygiene can go, oh, can, pose serious health risks like reproductive and urinary tract infections. Seriously, look up toxic shock syndrome. It's horrible, it's life-threatening, and it's why you should change your tampon regularly. Um, not to mention, poor performance at school or work. But what if you don't have access to hygiene products at all? Uh, hundreds of millions of people around the world don't have access to affordable menstrual products 
if they have access to menstrual products at all. Seriously, it doesn't help that we freaking tax menstrual hygiene products as luxury items. Do you know that? We do that all over the place, not just in this country. It's not in the script, but it's freaking stupid. Um, up we go to level eight. Uh, <laughs> okay, level eight, let's try it. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, people of color, people with special needs, people with disabilities, the homeless, and people living in conflict-afflicted areas, low-income countries, and in the wake of natural disasters are especially likely ah, to suffer, <coughs> suffer from a lack of menstrual products, period education, hygiene facilities, waste management, or a combination of these things, which is a condition known as period poverty, which affects an estimated 500 million people worldwide. Wow. Ah. Okay, uh, level nine now. Ah! <laughs> All right, level nine on this side. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> oh man, that's that's really something. <laughs> when I. When I, uh, when I talk or when I move, it, it, it hits me different every time I wiggle around. Oh, I'm gonna try to stand up more. Ah! <laughs> okay, uh, level uh, nine. So, in the United States alone, around 17 million people who menstruate are living in poverty at this very moment. Not period poverty, general poverty, which as we're trying to explain, exacerbates all of this. A poll of women in 2020 showed that almost two thirds of women in the United States could not regularly afford menstrual products with nearly half of them reporting occasionally having to choose between menstrual products and food. That's awful. Oh my gosh. Wow. Ah, it just keeps going. <laughs> okay. Uh, and that's level 10. Here we go. Sail right into it. Oh God. <laughs> Oh man, okay, you can see there we're all the way up to level 10 on both sides. Oh, I hope that's focusing because I'm not holding that up much longer. All right, as with most issues, education is key. Many people with uteruses don't have a good understanding of what a period is or how to handle it properly or even that it is a normal and natural thing. Uh, this causes a great amount of stress and pain and fear and shame where it simply isn't needed. Ah, and that's why it's incredibly important that we, we educate young girls and boys and everybody else whose gender is a spectrum about menstruation so that they can end the stigma surrounding periods and be more open and more realistic about this topic. But we need to be focusing ah, on making menstrual products and hygiene facilities available and affordable to everyone who needs them. If, to find out more about periods, period poverty, and what you can do to help support menstruation, education, and increase access to menstrual products for period havers all over the world, you can visit websites like PlannedParenthood.org, UNICEF.org, or Period.org. Thank you for listening. Oh, 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 I'm sweaty. Thank you so much for watching and for liking and commenting, subscribing, and all the other stuff that you do on YouTube. Have an awesome rest of your day, and never stop learning. Oh, man. Oh, hey, babe. Babe, I just did 3,000 sit-ups. Oh.